Hello and welcome to India's World. Today we are going to discuss the state of Indo-US relationship. The India-US dialogue, which was stalled by the controversy over the arrest of diplomat Devyani Khobargade, seems to be getting back on track. US Food and Drug Administration Chief Margaret Hamburg visited India recently. This was followed by the visit of Nisha Biswal Desai, US Assistant Secretary of State for South Asian Affairs last week. She is being followed by US Energy Secretary who will be on a two-day visit in India for the energy security dialogue. So it looks as if the bilateral calendar of meetings between the two countries has been resumed. But how far will it go to bring the relationship back on track? How serious is the rupture in the relationship? And what would be needed to repair the breach? To discuss these issues, we have with us two former foreign secretaries and a professor of international relations. We have with us uh, uh, Ambassador Lalit Singh. India's uh, former foreign secretary and ambassador to the US, another foreign secretary, Ambassador Kaval Sibyl, who was India's ambassador to Egypt, to uh, France and to Russia and knows America well, you had a long tenure there. And we have Professor Chintamani Mahapatra, professor at School of International Studies at Jawaharlal Nehru University, specialist in the United States of America. So welcome all of you to this discussion. Okay. Ambassador Mansingh, let me begin with you. <coughs> Has the process of bridging this gap between the relationship, this breach that had occurred, has it begun? How deep was the rupture and what were the causes of this rupture? But this, this came as a surprise to me even though I, I have dealt with the US for a long time. This is the worst bilateral crisis we have had since 1998 when we did the nuclear test. That was policy oriented. This was more This, this, is, this is a big difference. There were major, major issues of policy about our right to have nuclear weapons, the Americans wanting us to join the NPT, all yeah. that was involved. This was virtually a non-issue, yeah. a wage dispute between an Indian diplomat exactly. and a maid servant. But it became a crisis because there was no attempt on either side to resolve it quickly. Yeah, but my question was, you know, we leave aside the yeah, yeah. Were there other, other things that were going wrong? The other thing, the, 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 these, these uh, differences were brewing in the last two years. Um, our our uh, budget proposed tax uh, proposals which are not liked by the international community, particularly by American business. Then the serious differences over many areas, mainly relating to business, on, on compulsory licensing, on uh, protection of drugs and pharmaceuticals, uh, on uh, telecom policy, on preferential market access, uh, on, on nuclear policy regarding a nuclear liability law, and more recently, uh, in the solar uh, power sector, yeah. uh, the Americans have gone to the WTO yeah. in an action against yeah. India. We have now 14 uh, trade disputes with the United States in yeah. the WTO. Yeah. So I think the trade front is yeah. serious. Yeah. There are okay. lots of, lots of okay. uh, problems on that side. From our side, we have problems with our immigration laws yeah. and the threat that we are seeing. Yeah. to our professionals working in the United yeah. States. Yeah. We're going to discuss so this in greater detail. There is, there is a sense of uh, uh, non-connection yeah. and not being able to resolve these differences which have been brewing for the last two years. Okay. The Deviani episode sort of served as the trigger okay. to, to bring out the straw on the camel's back, the straw on the camel's back which brought a sense of outrage and reveal the lack of trust between the two sides, okay. even though we have a strategic partnership. Okay. Well, Sibyl, I'm, I'm sure there are strategic issues also where we differ and we'll come to the, uh, them in a minute. But let me ask you this, this process of restoration of the relationship, to what extent will it be hampered by the fact that the Indian government is a lame duck government now? And in the US, the Obama administration is not enthusiastic about India at all. So you can have as many bureaucratic meetings as you like, but there's no, it's not backed by a, a, a political push. See, we have to keep uh, in mind the fact that uh, the United States relationship is our most important external relationship, yeah. notwithstanding all the difficulties we are facing. And therefore, there is no way that uh, this relationship can be ignored uh, by either side. The U.S. also has developed stakes in India, high stakes in India, strategic stakes. Uh, Yes, uh, we, have, we are entering into an electoral phase, but this is a situation which affects our relations with all countries, including our neighbors. People will wait and watch and see what happens, uh, what, which is the new government that's formed and what its policy would be. But nevertheless, day-to-day -day contacts uh, will continue, uh, but serious political dialogue will obviously be interrupted. On the U.S. side, yes. what surprises me is why Mr. Obama 
uh, who a few years ago came here and uh, in what I thought was overblown rhetoric said that the relationship with the India will be the defining one for the 21st century, now seems to have lost interest in India. Yeah. Doesn't make sense to me at all. If India was important three, four years ago, India is still important and will continue to be important for the same reasons why US thought India was important. So why has he taken his eye, for, eye off the ball? I think it's more a commentary on US politics and the way US handles relations with other countries, including important ones, mm -hmm. rather than any failing on our part. Okay. Uh, Professor Mahapatra, when, uh, when India and US signed the civilian nuclear cooperation deal, expectations were very high. To what extent uh, has the hype met with Indian expectations uh, out of uh, how that relationship was sought to be changed? You know, there have been expectations from the side of India and expectations from the side of America. Yeah. And the Devijani Khobargadi issue was just symbolic. It was not the cause of the rupture as you described the relationship. I would say it's more difficult to not rupture in the relationship. Yeah. Rupture in the dialogue process, which is now slowly, slowly coming back to the yeah. thing. You know, last year in 2013, when Obama and Singh summit took place, 170 congressmen wrote a letter to Obama complaining about India's economic policy. And 14 American companies doing business in India wrote the same kind of uh, letter to Obama, they were trying to pressurize India. From the Indian side, the problem was the immigration bill which is there in the US Congress yeah. is apparently going to affect our IT sector. From the Indian side, again, uh, we have a lot of complaints about uh, the way the Americans are following a policy on Afghanistan and uh, Bangladesh, where a lot of differences. So differences were brewing slowly, slowly under Obama two administration. And suddenly, this Devjani Khobar Gade is Okay, okay. My, issue was, my question was slightly different, but I'll, I'll, I'll come back in a minute. We need to take a break at this point. We'll continue with this interesting discussion in a bit. Till then, keep watching. Welcome back. We are discussing the state of uh, India's relationship with the United States of America. Uh, Ambassador uh, Mansing, um, is there a mismatch between U.S. expectations on the relationship and Indian expectations uh, from the relationship? And are the American expectations in the strategic sphere perceived by some as impinging on India's strategic autonomy on how to deal with the world, including India's neighbors? Well, I'll tell you that the that, that two expectations of the American side. One was they thought that India was going to be uh, the next economic superpower. Yeah. Uh, India has not quite, li quite lived up to it. You know, we came yeah. down from 9% to 4.5%. So American business started downgrading India mm -hmm. as, as a place for trade or yeah. investments and so on. The other uh, disappointment on the American side was yeah. they expected India to be a really a global player, to be active in everything and so on. But India has followed a very traditional policy of caution. Yeah. and not uh, jumping into situations or taking open stands. These are the two causes for this point. But the real cause is, I think, economic. The yeah. fact that American companies are now pushing yeah. America, the U.S. administration, to take sanctions against India yeah. shows that it is American uh, business interests that are driving policy towards India. From our side, the expectations were, well, uh, we are going to get uh, the flow of technology, investments, Everything will be easy and smooth. It hasn't been. It hasn't been easy and smooth because there are issues to be resolved, for many of which we are also responsible. Firstly, we passed the nuclear liability law without actually foreseeing the consequences. So it's not just Americans, but every other foreign country interested in giving us nuclear power has been disappointed, including the Russians and the French. On military technology, uh, uh, we, we, we have been inactive. Yeah. In, in pushing for major acquisitions yeah. when the opportunities came there. So you're right, there is a mismatch on okay. both sides. And somehow there is a feeling that they're not talking to each other, mm. like they used to talk in the time of President George It's not only really feeling, we have not been talking to each other. We, we, look, the, the President and uh, Prime Minister and Pres President Obama have been meeting. Yeah. It's not as if they have they've not had mm. contacts with yeah. each other. But the kind of intimate understanding that we used to have, yeah. say, before Obama, yeah. is not happening. Okay, let me take that to Mr. Sibyl. You wrote in a recent article of yours that the strategic trust that was built during the uh, tenure of uh, George W. Bush uh, uh, has been frittered away. Uh, and it's been frittered away because of a series of wrong steps taken by the Obama administration. 
Uh, what are these wrong steps that the Obama administration took? Well, the first uh, wrong, it's not a step, but the first uh, wrong presumption on the United States part is, uh, it was that uh, uh, India will open up its arms and its doors yep. and its economy and its politics and its strategic thinking and its worldview uh, and bring it in alignment with the U.S. preferences. Uh, I mean, this is absurd. I mean, they, then they didn't do their homework seriously, yeah. which, which, uh, which would be surprising. Uh, they should have uh, had a very clear view of what are the core uh, elements of India's uh, foreign policy and, and, and outlook and also deficiencies. Uh, these are not hidden either. Then for them to have these expectations that we will join them, uh, join them in what? In endorsing their action in Libya, in endorsing their, what are they doing in, uh, in Syria, even in Ukraine, what is happening is not something that we can endorse. Endorsing their uh, talks to, with the Taliban, uh, their softness towards Pakistan, uh, they are pushing the human rights agenda in Sri Lanka and placing the government of India in very difficult choices uh, because that gave an opportunity to the Tamil Nadu government to press India to vote against Sri Lanka. Trying to accommodate the Islamists in Bangladesh is it something that we can, we can endorse. So I think on the defense side, in fact, they, they are the biggest beneficiaries in the last few years of India's acquisition processes. We have placed orders worth $9 billion worth of arms, uh, more than we have placed with any other country, but they simply seem to have pocketed it. On the economic side, it's just one or two companies. They are lobbyists. We, we will have, discuss that in a that, separate that, that, no, that have pushed this, their, their agenda. It's not an economic crisis between India yeah. and United yeah. States. It's the interest of specific pharmaceutical and uh, and uh, and uh, um, other lobbies, IBM and company, which have which have pushed this agenda, which is the weakness of the American system, frankly. Okay, okay. Uh, Professor Mahapatra, uh, as uh, Master Sibyl said, you know, except on Sri Lanka human rights issues. India uh, and US don't see eye to eye in the neighborhood at all, you know. Uh, we don't see eye to eye in Pakistan and how Pakistan is dealing with the Taliban, the military aid to Pakistan. We don't see eye to eye in Afghanistan where the Taliban are sought to be given a share in power. On Bangladesh elections, we saw how jamaat e islami an anti-Indian force was projected as a moderate Islamic force. Uh, we don't see eye to eye on Iran. Uh, so, uh, uh, why should we see eye to eye? with the U.S. and help them when China uh, uh, becomes active in the Pacific. You know, when you see the day-to-day -day affairs and policy issues on specific uh, items, mm -hmm. uh, I agree that a lot of differences are there between the two and it's quite natural. You have similar kind of differences between Americans and Canadians, Americans and French and all. But if you see the long-term thing, I think we have been doing a lot of military exercises with them across the board, Army, Air Force, Navy, Special Forces. To what end? And uh, no, no, I'm saying that if you see in the long term, when the Americans are trying to use India as a linchpin of the rebalance strategy in uh, the Asia Pacific, they mean serious business. In fact, last week, the Quadrennial Defense Review was uh, released. And if you analyze uh, the comment in that review in the light of the differences that you have in the neighborhood, it is just the opposite. They still have have very high positive opinion about and expectation about the role that India could play Correct. in setting a new kind of architecture in the Asia Pacific. So in, in matters of security and defense, if you see the long term uh, goal of maintaining a good balance of power in Asia, I think the relationship is still very, very positive. Yeah. Why should India be the linchpin in Asia Pacific and not be the linchpin in uh, South Asia? I'll I, tell you why. Yeah. I think we have our interests coinciding in the Indo-Pacific area. Mm. There is an understanding that we face a major threat in our region from a major country in our neighborhood. Mm. The Americans also look that, at that. That country's nuclear relationship, its military cooperation with Pakistan is not taken on board when it comes to yes, true, uh, true, dealing with true. India the and po Pakistan. Point is, point is, we often assume that to have a strategic partnership, we must make a list of all the issues and have identical positions in all of them. Yeah. I think it is assumed that we will have differences. Okay. We started the strategic partnership with the understanding. Yeah. But it is strategic because in the long term, we have interests which coincide. Okay. And I think there is a powerful interest yeah. in the Indo-Pacific region, yeah. which is why this strategic partnership will survive. Okay. Um, I, I agree with Professor Mahapatra. Mm. Let's not focus on the differences on various issues. Yeah. They will continue and they should continue as true democracy we must understand that. But our, our vital interests are there okay. 
And I'll tell you when people say the Americans need us more than we need the Americans. Mm. Let's make it clear. You may not love the Americans, you don't have to. Yeah. But you have interest in the United States, which yeah. are in our national yeah. interest. Number one, yeah. trade yeah. is our biggest uh, trading partner. We're going to come to trade. We're running we, out of time on this segment. No, I'm we, going to we, come back to I, you on I'm trade. going to say the yeah. four or five issues for which you need to understand why this relationship is. Mm. Trade, investments, technology, mm. security, mm. and a global position for India. Okay. And I'm sure, I'm sure you, have, you have a slightly different view. I'm going to come, come back to you after the break. We need to take a break at this point. We'll be back again in a bit. Don't go away. Welcome back. We're discussing the state of India's relationship with the United States. Uh, Mr. Sibyl, Mr. Man Singh says we should not discuss the differences. We should emphasize the commonalities. Why should we not discuss the differences? After all, uh, unless you discuss everything, the relationship can't become strong. No, I would say that the commonalities are essentially abstract mm. and the differences are real on the ground. Mm. You know, you can talk about democracy and shared values mm. and all that. Uh, in the, in the history of our relationship with the United States, we have seen that it hasn't really mattered when it came to, came to India's vital strategic interests. The United States did not give us any bonus for the fact that we were a, a democracy. They have been supporting dictatorships in our, in our neighborhood. And look at the relationship they've built with China. Yeah. An enormous relationship. And this is respect to the fact that China is certainly yeah. uh, not, a, not a democracy. Yeah. But in real terms, I think the United States uh, seems to be taking a very transactional approach, want quick returns on the investments that they are making. The Pentagon may, may be having a longer term view, but the White House and the State Department and the economic lobbies, uh, they seem to be working on a very short term agenda okay. that since we did the nuclear deal, therefore India owes us a great deal and therefore it should do whatever they would wish in terms of uh, changes within our rules and regulations and policies on all sorts of matters. Forgetting that if India is deficient on this score, first of all, it hurts us. But if we are, it is not because it is U.S. directed. It affects our relations with every other country. But the United States is very belligerent. They are upfront yeah. in trying to target India. Okay. Uh, and then creating these misunderstandings and creating more, more, more distress in the Indian mind as to whether the United States' commitment to a long-standing, long-term, deep strategic relationship is real or do we have periodically uh, to, to convince them that we are their friends and we must open a lot of things to them and give them a lot of goodies. You have to tell them, them all the time you are in love with them. And but, this and that. <laughs> but, but that is not possible within our political yeah. but system. But let me, let me take this belligerence uh, to, yeah. to, to a different subject. Yeah. How do you view this attempt being made in the US to, you know, under the special 301 trade review, um, clubbing India with the worst offenders and calling India a priority foreign country? They're likely, not, to, des they're likely to designate it. Everybody expects them to do so. So, uh, uh, how do you view these attempts? No big deal. This is not the first time the Americans are doing it. Yeah. Soon after the end of the Cold War, Bill Clinton was the first one who put yeah. India under both Special 301 and Super 301 yeah. target list and all. So, these kinds of things are happening all the time. As uh, Ambassador Lalith Singh said, 14 yeah. cases of differences are there in the WTO yeah. on IPR related issues and all. Yeah. So, this is a matter of negotiation and debate that yeah. we should involve with, with the Americans. Yeah. We have different positions, different priorities, different problems. So ultimately this kind of issue are going to be negotiated and talked out rather than go to uh, you know, the legal cell and you know have a long process of resolution but on the belligerent thing i just want to give one footnote that at the moment if you observe obama's policy towards a host of countries yeah. they are following the belligerent policy they are beginning to have a kind of cold, cold conflict with the chinese look at with the russians look at the syrians look at the libyans you just name it egypt and all so at the moment the obama too is desperately following Following belligerent policies okay. because the problem at home is really intense. Okay, Mr. Um, Singh, um, Indian policies by and large, India claims, are in line with TRIPS IPR policies. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever India is doing is within the TRIPS agreement, trade related sure. intellectual property sure. rights. That has been uh, reaffirmed by the Doha Declaration on TRIPS and uh, health issues. So, the flexibilities that India gets under a multilateral agreement like TRIPS, which is compulsory licensing of life-saving drugs, new generation drugs for cancer, kidney, liver, etc. Why should it give up the f those flexibilities under bilateral pressure from the US? We are not, uh, we shouldn't give up. Okay. Why, why should we give up? Exactly. Because there is a forum where we can argue our case yeah. and we can win our case. So, I don't see why we should be intimidated by what American business is doing. They are promoting their interests. And we should stoutly depend, defend 
our policy yeah. before the WTO. But let me say this. I mean, I've been hearing these discussions. When people say, you know, the Americans are bullying us and so on, I think it, it reveals us uh, some kind of inferiority complex. When the Americans said they were going to leave Afghanistan, we sent out signals saying, please don't do so, it's, it's going to hurt our interests. Now, I say, the Americans have come from thousands of miles away. We are the neighborhood power. Shouldn't we having our own independent position on Afghanistan, then why not about the American presence there? So I think we should build up our own strength. And let me, let me make another argument, yeah. that when you add the Americans yeah. to your list of hostile countries, as I... I'm, I, not, I'm not adding the not, US. Not, but in the public perception, mm. America is being seen as a hostile power. I say, you, you must be clear in your criteria. Which country is sending terrorists across the border to, to destabilize India? Which country is supplying military, nuclear and missile technology to Pakistan to create problems of India? Which country is uh, making intrusions across yeah. 4,000 kilometers of a disputed border? Those are the, are the problem countries you must deal with. Mm. Not, not with a country that says we have strategic interests with you. Well, I, wish, I, wish, I wish you had said all this when people of your tribe were agitating in TV studios about US implementing its domestic laws against uh, Devyani Khobargadi. No, no, even, At that point, even, even on Devyani, yeah. I say don't be intimidated. Yeah. I think we did the right things. Yeah. We slapped uh, reciprocal you conditions. No, atmosphere was created, an anti-US atmosphere was created entirely no, I, by a set I, of I, I, IFS no, officers I, going and... It is, it is not. I, this, yeah. is, this is what some American think tanks are saying. Mm. It's the work of the IFS trade union. Mm. It is not. I wish the IFS trade union were that strong right. to have the government, the opposition, the media, the whole country yeah. following a certain line. I think we did the right things in the okay. Okay. case. All right, let's get back to economics. Uh, Indian drug companies have virtually been blocked in the US. Renbaxi fully, uh, Vocard only uh, partially. Uh, the USTR and the uh, US International Trade Commission is threatening to take India to WTO. On solar cells, we have a dispute already. Uh, about uh, uh, then they say the tax laws are not transparent and so on and so forth. Now, are these uh, really uh, and, and India, of course, has concerns about immigration and uh, 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 domestic content, even in America. Um, are these normal uh, so trade disputes, as Professor uh, Mahapatra was saying, or uh, you know, if you trade in the country, you'll have these issues? Are they being blown out of proportion? No, at one level, they are normal disputes if you look at American conduct in the past in terms of its uh, relationship with its major economic partners, take the case of Japan mm. in the 1980s. So I won't say this is abnormal, this is how America is and we have to deal with this situation. It's only abnormal to this extent, if we can call it abnormal, is that uh, the WTO was actually created yeah. uh, to be able to resolve disputes of th this nature between countries in a multilateral forum and uh, get out of this American bullying habits to a special 301 and and Super 301, which they had used as tools to put e economic pressure bilaterally. But here in these cases, the United States uh, is again resorting to the old methodology of putting bilateral pressure. And the interesting thing is that in, many, in all these cases that have been mentioned, no American company has been targeted. It's either a German company or a Swiss company or a British company, yeah. whether it's tax laws or on the Solar cells, American side. companies have been no, yeah. no, solar cells is some, it's a very complex issue and the American case is not that, that clear. Uh, be, but we'll get into a longer yeah, debate, yeah, no, you don't have time. Yeah. So the thing is the American companies are not involved, but they feel that India's economic yeah. influence is growing. Okay. What is doing may be emulated by other countries. Yeah. Brazil and South okay. Africa already yeah. are trying yeah. to change their policies with regard to patents and this and that. So they want to create, make, make, make everybody else aware that there's a price to pay by targeting India. And that's okay. where the problem is. All right. So we're, we're running out of time. So I want each one of you to tell me in one sentence each what happens when a new government comes. <coughs> Not only does a new government come, but suppose India is not able to get onto the growth path again, what will be the uh, fate of uh, India-US relationship? I think the differences on specific issues will continue yeah. between the two countries. Yeah. It is going to be a long drawn out negotiation, okay. but ultimately yeah. it is a sound relationship. Okay, so one sentence. I please. think it's absurd to say that because India's growth has declined and therefore United States lost instead. What are US's own growth rates? Yeah. And what is the growth rates of big countries? Okay. Growth rates have declined everywhere. Europe is in a mess. So why should we accept the US okay. argument that they have lost interest in India because yeah. Indian growth rates have right. come down from okay. 9% to 5%. Thank you. Thank you. Last, last word. I think we need to get back to, to our basic 
common interests, yeah. which are strategic. But in the short run, I don't see much prospects of things improving okay. because we are facing elections and very soon the Obama administration itself will be lame duck. Okay. Therefore, it will take a while for right. the relations to okay. get back on track. Okay. Thank you very much for analyzing Indo-US relations and the rupture in the relationship. And let's hope that rupture gets healed soon. That's all we have for you today. We'll be back again next week with another interesting issue. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.